Hello again. I thought I would take seriously the suggestion which has been made here about the idea that advertisements featuring a disproportionate number of members of ethnic minorities, particularly visible minorities, might in fact be part of an international conspiracy. Let's dive down that particular rabbit hole and see how it might work. Before doing so, though, let's think for a moment about the kind of things that we are seeing in addition to a lot of black people in advertisements. Homosexuality is also being promoted. Lloyd's Bank, um, I mentioned yesterday, have made the shortlist in this year's Channel 4's Diversity Awards and uh, uh, picked up a quarter of a million pounds straight away for doing so. They feature not only a lot of black models, of course, but uh, even gay people. The thumbnail to this video shows an advertisement for Lloyd's Bank, um, which has a homosexual proposing marriage to his catamite. Um, even the most ardent conspiracy enthusiasts would be hard-pressed to fit that into the Kalergi plan. The truth is, though, it's all of a piece with a mad desire to be young and not at all stuffy. Television companies, supermarket chains, politicians all fall over themselves to prove that they are young and up-to-date in the modern world. This is why people who are educated at Eton and Oxford University do their best to speak like Barrow Boys. It's the same thing. They want to be seen as ordinary young with it people rather than old fogies. Everybody knows that we must treat homosexuals in the same way as anybody else. So let's go one step further and celebrate the idea of marriage between gay people. How modern and edgy is that? There was a time when having a black man marry your white daughter was the stuff of nightmares, but not anymore in this modern and liberal world. This is why so many mixed-race couples appear in advertisements and situation comedies. It is a sort of visual shorthand, a handy image that shows you're not part of the past, but you're embracing the future what was once something that uh, people treated as being shameful and disgraceful is now something you can brandish and show that you're so at ease with it. Youth is all, the multicultural society, gay marriage, slovenly ways of speaking, pop music, casual clothes, all these are part of the craze for being modern. They tell everybody that our company or political party is not stuck in the awful past, which is full of racism and homophobia, but it's go-ahead and progressive. Turning now to advertising, the United Nations has of course been put forward as a body which might be mixed up in this business of um, having a preponderance of black models as part of a campaign for the great replacement of white people in Europe by those from Africa. It has also been remarked, uh, more than once here, that the larger advertising companies in Britain are owned and operated by Jews, which may well be true for all I know to the contrary. The name of Saatchi was mentioned in this connection a few days ago. The Saatchis are certainly Jews, so let's focus on them and see how they could fit into a covert plan to change the ethnic makeup of the British Isles. In the description to this video, I provide a link to the annual returns of Saatchi and Saatchi to Companies House. I can think of two reasons offhand why the Saatchis would participate in an underground plot to alter the ethnicity of Britain, or, or indeed Europe as a whole. One is money, and the other is ideology. Let's think first about money. Let's imagine that some organisation, and it doesn't matter who, the United Nations, the Illuminati, the Freemasons, the European Union, um, 
of some cabal of Jewish bankers. Let's forget, it doesn't matter who they are. They've decided to hand the Saatchi brothers £10 million and ask them to soften up Britain for the Great Replacement. And this is certainly something that has been suggested here in the comments. I can imagine it would be quite possible to hide this large payment from the tax people and anybody else and somehow pass it through a company in the Bahamas. So it's not at all unfeasible that uh, Saatchi and Saatchi could take a huge payment and then it wouldn't show up in their company records. That's fine. The first difficulty that they will face is getting the company to adopt this policy. And the reason I say that is that um, the Saatchi brothers have six and a half thousand employees working in 114 offices in 67 different countries. If the word is spread to all those people that a policy of propaganda is to be launched in order to promote the replacement of the population of Europe with people from Africa, is it reasonable to assume that none of these people will raise an eyebrow? This is big news. Will none of the employees go beetling off to sell a scoop to the media about what the company is uh, up to? I can't see it. Still, all right, <clears throat> let's suppose that nobody does raise an eyebrow and that every one of those six and a half thousand workers is at once on board with the new policy. Now the problems really start. OK, I run a company selling frozen food. I engage the Saatchi's to launch a new advertising campaign for me, you know, for my company. They go off and mock up a few ideas and then come back to me. To earn their £10 million from the uh, shadowy people who want to promote the Great Replacement, the Saatchi's have produced three possible themes for the campaign for my frozen food company and want to know which one I will run with. All three feature a family with a black father and a white mother. If I don't like this, they will, to earn their money, have to go back, you know, their money from me, that is, my business, my fee, they'll have to go back and produce new ones with white families in them. Unless we assume that the frozen food company are also being paid by the Freemasons to endorse the Kalergi plan or the Great Replacement, then the fact that they will go with the mixed race family, <coughs> as so many companies do today, tells me it is what they think will be just the thing. They're paying, after all, this must be what they want as well. So in other words, the fact that so many companies like Tesco's, Lloyd's and all the rest of them have these uh, mixed race families and black models in them is not because they are being pushed to do it by the advertising companies. <coughs> they have a free choice. The fact that they're doing it means that they want to do it. This is only one advertising company. I mean, Saatchi is a big, but they're not the only company doing it. Have all the others also been bribed by the United Nations to encourage their clients to use black people in the advertisements as well? Each of those companies, too, has hundreds and thousands of employees, remember. What are the odds that not a single employee rumbles what is going on and goes to the newspapers or television? This would be the scoop of the century. Unless we assume that all the newspapers are also in the conspiracy, along with every television channel, that doesn't really sound very likely to me. So much for the idea that money is behind this. The other possibility is that the Saatchi's are driven by ideological motives. This really does seem feeble. Um, all we know of the Saatchi's suggests that they are driven by no ideology more complex than getting rich and evading taxes. They may be Jews, but that doesn't really signify. Being a Jew doesn't mean that people would follow a common and predictable ideology any more than it would if they were Armenians or Presbyterians. Some Armenians are fervent Armenian nationalists, many are not. Some uh, Presbyterians will stop at nothing to spread their faith, but most aren't like that at all. It's the same with Jews. Many are Zionists, but an awful lot aren't. Some are religious, 
but not all. There are many left-wing Jews, but there's a lot of conservatives as well. There's another difficulty here. Um, let's imagine for a moment that the Saatchi brothers are devoted to the Kalergi plan, and they'll do anything at all to encourage Europeans to accept that mixed-race families are the norm by means of an insidious campaign of advertising, which will have the effect of preparing people subliminally for the Great Replacement. We now have the same problem as we saw before, that all their 6,500 employees will have to go along with the conspiracy and not breathe a word of it to anybody outside the company. They're, not all the employees are Jews, so even if the Saatchis were somehow you know, fanatically um, in favour of this scheme, I can't see all their employees going along with it. You see, the truth is that... Um, I'm trying to think how I can explain this. The Saatchis have become enormously rich by doing everything necessary to acquire clients who pay well for their services. That's how the Saatchis became a big advertising company. If instead of being driven by profit, which I think they are at the moment, they now start to push for things on ideological grounds, their clients will flee in droves. They won't stay with an advertising company that is not doing what they ask, but instead trying to get them to take part in some uh, worldwide scheme to alter the composition of Europe. If the advertising campaigns don't work that they're paying for, they'll stop using the Saatchi brothers. This will soon be revealed in the accounts for the Saatchis, obviously, and then you'll read about it in the Financial Times. I know that some of the people who watch these videos are convinced that something is going on with the advertisements, and this is an open forum where people can explain if they think I'm mistaken about this. It's quite possible I am mistaken. If anybody wants to set out the mechanism which might explain how the process would work, then this is their opportunity to do so.